I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. And I'm here with the super millennial David Barreto giving us the millennial perspective. Big Dave, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How's it going? Going good, going good. This week, our topic is respect. In today's Health Huddles, we're going to discuss self-respect. Better give me some respect there, son. (laughs) Anything you want to hit before we hit this? No, let's get into it. So respect means you accept somebody for who they are, even when they are different from you or don't agree with you. Respect is defined as a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something. Respect is due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, beliefs, and traditions of others. So there's where your respect is due or due respect, right? So the energy built around respect is actually the green zone energy of 350 acceptance. You can let go of your need to defend and attack. You can let go of your beliefs and accept someone as they are. And even if they are totally opposite of you and your belief systems, when you show respect, you have the ability to let go. Your thoughts on that? You understand it? Yeah, I I think that was a a good one where everybody's like, you know, respect is earned and not given, things like that. I think, you know, that's where we lose a lot of it, especially like in this generation, because you you go into it with respect based off of this definition and energy, you know, if you're not, then you're not going into it in that level. You're going for pride. Kind of what we talked about. We did on Sunday, I did the Mike Menser story and you know, Mike Menser as most Mm -hmm. people don't, but it's a sad story Yeah, when you know his history because his whole career, his whole life, his whole life, forget his career was absolutely destroyed because he felt like he was disrespected. Mm -hmm. And when you have disrespect, that's a program. And the pendulum of disrespect is self-respect. So what is self-respect? Well, the dictionary states that self-respect is pride and confidence in oneself. Can you see a potential conflict here? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? If your self-respect is held in pride, you'll be set in a program that tells you, this is what I need to feel respected. This creates expectation and this sets the stage for disrespect. Mm -hmm. You see how it works, right? Now, self-respect must be set consciously. It must be self-authored. That's a big difference, you know, because like you said, society, culture, you know, where, how you were raised creates, a, creates the respect program. Now, self-respect is simply loving yourself and treating yourself with care. Self-respect is activated through the heart, connecting and staying true to your purpose and your true values. Self-respect from the heart actually activates the purple zone energies. 500 love. You love yourself without attachment of doing you are in the freedom of being. 540 joy. You love your life and you are fulfilled in being, not just in achieving. You are happy in flow and you are happy in conflict. And 600 peace. You respect life as it presents itself, creating an alignment and living in harmony. So the purple zone energies are the base of true self-respect. You are connected to you, the true self. You stay true to your values. This is connection of head, heart, and hand. And this is what creates integrity of behavior. You're consistent in your routine, a routine that connects you to the essence of the human being. So when you look at that connection, the essence of the human, the biological essence, self-respect to care for the body. Social essence, self-respect to remain in the higher consciousness on the mountain, understanding You can see, but you don't know, so you don't feed the valley or the egos, and you don't stay in the valley in conflict. Your self-respect is tied to your journey, your true self, and tied to others' true self. And then finally, the spiritual essence. 
Your self-respect keeps your behavior in the process, creating alignment of your inner world, the mind, to the outer world of what is. The self-respect here is held in spiritual essence. Does it live in the valley, state of restriction, base energy fear with the behavior and event judgment and reaction? No, in spiritual essence, you self-respect, you live in awareness. You live in response. Your thoughts on that, David? You know, this makes me think about, and, and I hate that we always bring up the gym, but the gym is like, it has taught me so much already. It's your it's your journey, buddy. Yeah, it, and, and I think it's interesting because like, you know, when I used to go in the gym when I was like really overweight and stuff like that, I'd look at people and kind of like the big guys and be more judgmental and things like that. When I saw what it took and the amount of discipline and, and like you said, self-respect I had to give myself. Now when I see certain people like that, I I give them respect whether they know it or not because I know the amount of effort and kind of, you know, even self even sacrifices that they made for themselves and the respect that they have to give themselves in order to do it. And that usually creates a very, you know, mutual respect relationship in the gym. And I may not even notice know the person, you know. Most of the time I don't. But I think that's where, you know, your physical representation, your health you know, it's that first sign of being able to show whether or not you even respect yourself or not. And I agree. And we're on health huddles, right? So self-respect is the first step toward understanding that you do deserve love, you do deserve to be happy, and you do deserve to live a life that is fulfilling. And so what does self-respect have to do with health? And the answer is everything. So we, you, what you said is absolutely true. When we talk about what it takes for optimal health, right? The five, the five steps, the five parts of optimal health. One is sleep, two is hydration water, three is the mind, four is diet, and five is exercise. If you don't have self-respect for yourself, you don't take care of your sleep. If you don't have self-respect for yourself, you're not focused on drinking water. And if you don't have self-respect for yourself, you're living in the ego and in a, in a valley-stated mind and if you don't have respect for yourself, you're not going to have a great diet and you're probably not going to exercise. Would you agree with all of those statements? Yeah, no, for sure. 100%. So that you wonder why would you have self-respect on a health huddles episode? Because without self-respect, you're not going to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. You're not going to understand that you deserve it, that you will make time then. That will not be um, a resistance anymore because you respect yourself, right? That self-respect is so important. You will create boundaries. You will will take the chance and you will up-level your life. You will invest in yourself. You All these things, when it comes to health, is tied to self-respect. Your thoughts on that, that part? Yeah, I, I think it, it opens the door for, you know, to see how much you were giving up and how much you have kind of kept from yourself when you start to do all these things. And like I said, it opens up for a lot more because I, I even started to give more respect to your time when I started to realize, oh, he, he goes to sleep that early to go to the gym to do all this and still work. For me, it gave a different respect outside of just the health category. And to say he's doing all this just so he can make sure it's done for us, you know, for us and the team and the community and all that stuff. And it opened my eyes towards that way. And I realized that it did stem towards health. And it, it was, does. that's why it's, you do it so early where you're not intruding on anyone else's time and things like that. Like I, the amount of effort that went around your health category was were so respectful to everyone else. You know, to my mom, to not waking up anybody, to being quiet, to doing all this stuff. Like when people just look at it, it's, he's crazy. He wakes up at 3.30 in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's, but when you look at how much outward respect that created for the people who acknowledge it and see it, it you did it for yourself, obviously. But it, yes. it extends to other people. And that's why now I even do the same thing with my timing and things like that. I don't want it to be an inconvenience. I don't want it. And then again, for me. If it's an inconvenience, it hinders my workout. So it allows me to focus on myself and respect my time, but also at the same time for the other people that are concerned or involved with me. 
When you have self-respect, we have to look at this connection. Self-respect is knowing your worth, Mm -hmm. right? Self-worth is what ties you to your true self. And self-worth is what ties you to the creation mind heart. Low self-worth ties you to the ego. Programmed identity, you're stuck in a cage mind head. When you have high self-worth, you know you deserve love, consideration to attain the life that you truly desire. When you have low self-worth, you feel you must do something or be something to be loved. And if you should get some success, deep down, you feel like you don't quite deserve it. With high self-worth comes high self-respect. With low self-worth comes low self-respect. Our self-respect is written within our programmed identity. You understand that that identity is important. When we self-author that identity, we have to self-author our self-respect program. We have to self-author our boundaries. We have to self-author our schedule, our, you know, how we're going to treat others. That's all about self-respect. Do you understand mm-hmm. that? Yeah. So when you look at it, it's written. Self-respect is actually something you have to create. See, the self-esteem is set. The ego self-esteem is set. This is the external factors and the accomplishments that make up your reality. The self-worth is the internal factors of how you feel about your reality. And our self-image is how we see our reality. It's what sets our routine, sets our life. And these are set for every single person at the age of 16. This becomes the blueprint of our level of self-respect. The human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is dictated by what is held in mind. Our level of self-respect held in mind instructs others in how to engage with us. And that's what you were just saying. Can you touch on that, David? Yeah, well, well, uh, an even better example, I think now would be the, you know, putting in that time and effort that people have seen over my journey now. I have friends that won't ask for me to go out and do certain things like go drinking or, you know, stay out super late. And in the beginning, when I didn't realize it, I was like, damn, you know, I'm not getting invited to these things. At least invite me to say no and stuff. But I had a really interesting conversation with one of those friends I used to hang out with a lot. He goes, no, nah, he goes, I know this is something that you don't do anymore. You got your routine and stuff like that. So I'll wait and I'll invite you to something that's, you know, around more. And I realized that he was doing it out of respect for me because he saw yes. that my my goals and the things I wanted for me were important. And that even though he would, he would be doing it out of being like a, you know, so-called good friend, it's a temptation that can pull me away from my goal. And for him, respectfully, wasn't inviting me into, you know, going out to eat bad or drink or, you know, staying out super late. And once I realized that, that, hmm, you know what? A lot of my friends stopped doing that, but I saw that they were inviting me to certain things like, hey, you want to go to the springs or go to the beach? And those were things that weren't hindering from goals that I set like a precedent of who I am and what I stand for as far as respect and what I'm worth. And they kind of reciprocated it that way. And the ones that didn't see it kind of just stopped. Yes. And you know, because what you're saying is absolute truth of your journey that you're experiencing. See, if you hold a healthy self-respect program, you will develop relationships and surround yourself with a tribe who will respect and support you. That's exactly what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. And the ones that don't support you, they just leave. It's nothing you have to do. It's it's they will, you will develop that tribe. If we hold an unhealthy self-respect program, we will develop relationships and surround ourselves with a tribe that will be set in want want of approval, want to belong. This tribe will be activated in expectation and attachment. And they only support you if it benefits them and you fit within their reality. Mm-hmm. You see, and I'm not putting people down. That's just the uh, react. Self-respect is very important because self-respect is loving yourself. That's all it is. And when you don't, you will surround up people Within your tribe that don't love themselves either. So you can all create the same reality with the conflict distortion. You support each other's reality. Yeah. 
but it goes the other way too. And that's what's happening to you. You're getting now people around you that supports your reality. And that's a reality held in high self-respect. I know we've never done a show on this, but I think it's so important, especially in today's world with such a strong magnetic desire, right? With all the social media and all the that, that activity, you can really sell yourself out looking for respect. But that's not self-respect. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the, so self respect is loving yourself. And it sounds easy enough. The challenge is do you know yourself? See, self respect is loving yourself and staying true to your values and not willing to compromise. The challenge is do you know your true values? In shift coaching, the goal is to shift your consciousness level. This is your vibration, this is your reality to the higher green zone energies. This shift moves you out of the valley reality. In the valley, you cannot see truth. This is when everybody is supporting your poor me or your problems. You are stuck in your subjective reality, your belief systems, your habits, and your routines. Now, this state is what's called dual consciousness. You see yourself as separate from others. Thus, you are comparing your life to others in judgment. And when you shift to the mountain, your view of life changes and your self-respect rises for the simple reason on the mountain, that's when you split the eyes. You see the eye of identification. You see the ego in your head who feels it must be better than, it must win at any cost, it must get more to be happy. The eye of identification, the ego, will lower your self-respect because it separates you from your true self. That's really what it does. Now, on the mountain, you connect to the heart, the creation mind. You connect to the true self of who you are. You then respect yourself, your purpose, your values, your life mission. But you also, this is important, on the mountain, you also see others and respect their life journey. You no longer judge them. You no longer impose your will to change them. You realize that you no longer need to compare your reality, your life to theirs. You leave magnetic desire behind. You understand it because you can see it. So do you understand that, how important that is as you're you're shifting? The self-respect comes up because you begin to know who you are. Your thoughts on that, David? Yeah, I think the the difference in the self respect changed the the perspective that I had. You know, like not just for myself and like others, but the, the things that I get to do. You know, like when when I talk about the gym, people always talk about like sacrifices that the gym makes and things like that. And when people are like, "Oh, you'd rather go to the gym than go out drinking with us?" Like, yeah. You know, like like it becomes a simple question. It's no longer a sacrifice because I know what it's doing for me. I know how it benefits me. And to me, it's almost like, you know, harming yourself in order for kind of the approval. It's almost like if you say yes to go out drinking or do something that you're gaining their respect in reality, you're just chipping off yours. Yes. And for me, the like the guilt of skipping something that I wanted to do to please someone else just makes me think that like, you know, their time or their opinion is worth more than mine. And that's where that self-respect starts to kind of, that self-worth starts to drop and drop and drop. Right. And that's exactly what happened. So let's talk about that because I'd like to get your opinion on these things, right? Because your generation and Brett's generation and Jace's generation, there's a new one, you know, Alpha underneath uh, (laughs) Z now. Um these generations are really connected into the social media, into how technology it is. We can't deny that's their, their reality, mm-hmm. correct? Uh, and so, and you understand magnetic desire is when you create, you, you create these internal models that you want what others have because you have a belief you're getting something. It's not actually the thing, it's the feeling, right? And so, What happens is when we get caught in comparison, comparing our life to this and this, and I know you understand that a lot from, you know, how much you understand social media and you understand your generation, when we get caught in comparison, you will begin to lose self-respect. And this is when the ego steps in and takes over your reality. The ego tells you, 
you're not good enough. You better do this. You need to do that. You need to, you need to get more, be more. Then you'll be happy. Then you will have self-respect. So a good jump into that a little bit, David, because you have more experience than I do with the, with the new generations and kind of how this comparison thing and always, you know, trying to be like somebody else. I've heard you say it a million times that you got to build your own life. Don't try to build somebody else's life and make it yours because that comparison, you don't have self-respect. Your thoughts. Yeah. When, when, especially when it comes to social media and, you know, constantly wanting to do what others do. I I thought that was one that I, I fought you on for a long time where I saw like, you know, certain influencers or, you know, bodybuilders and stuff. I'm like, yeah, but they can go out and do this and they stay out and do this and they eat this and everything was a comparison to that. Right. And I never established myself first because now when I see the same posts from the same people, I start to see the other side of it when they post the weekend of drinking or they were in Mexico doing this and all this stuff. And then when they come back, like, Oh, I was so bad on my diet, you know, trying to hit legs to punish myself. I realized that they're not happy about what they did. And that was the feeling that I was getting when I was trying to chase that, you know, Oh, you know what? Chris Bumstead, the Mr. Olympia would go out and drink and I can too. And then I would be upset that I did it. But I'm like, no, I had to try to talk myself into thinking it was okay. And the moment I realized that I had to justify it, it wasn't, it wasn't serving me at all. Right. Now when I see that, the comparison is no longer there. And I see that, I'm like, oh, you're going to regret that. Like, that's going <laughs> to suck. And, and it's no longer, I'm glad I'm not like that person because they, to them, no judgment on them. If that's the way that they feel that fits them and that's their Great. But to me, it's not a part of, you know, what I've established and doing anything outside of that. I just feel like, like I said, it's like chipping away. It's not going to destroy you in a day and making one mistake and saying, oh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. Isn't going to completely destroy your self-worth. But when you constantly kind of conform to other people or, you know, I saw this online and I'm going to do that consistently. I think one, you lose your own self-respect. You know, yes. but your identity starts to chip away too. You, you don't know who you are, mm-hmm. right? You're trying to be somebody else. You're trying to, you don't know why you want to do it, but there's this drive that, well, they look happy. They look successful. Yeah. I, I'm going to do what they do, right? Or I'm going to buy what they have, or I'm going to try to get what they have. You know what I'm saying? It's all the time like that. And that's big in our society because it's so unconscious, but self-respect and self-worth are married and self-respect is activated actually on the mountain in the green zone, energy, 350 acceptance. It's surrendering to the process. It's accepting your, what you're good at. It's accepting what you're not good at. It's acceptance. That's self-respect. You're not saying you're the best at everything. You're saying, I'm learning how to do this. I'm willing to fail. I'll fall on my ass. I'll get back up, but I'm not going to quit. That's self-respect. That's self-worth. And you're not going to let anybody else change who you are when you know who you are. No matter what they try to do, guilt you, or they try to do whatever, right, to get you to change your routine to match their reality. Because you have Mm self-respect. You understand it. But also when you have self-respect, you don't have to fight it either. You don't have to change your routine. You don't have to fall into the reality. You also don't have to judge them. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Take your journey. Let them take their journey. You don't have to change. You don't have to oppose your will on them, get mad at them, have resentment on them. Because that's disrespect. That's another program that pulls you into the valley. Self-respect is the ability, acceptance is the ability to let go. It's the ability to stay connected. It's the ability to stay in process, to create alignment of your mind, inner world to the outer world of what is and dealing with whatever's there. That's self-respect. You can't go and create disrespect because now you're creating resentment and the ego will use it that way too. Mm -hmm. You see? So when we talk about build your your, you know, we talk about building your reality of self-respect. In other words, you got a self-author. Number one, I have, and then I'll let you touch on this. I believe you got to discover your purpose 
You got to discover your true values and you got to split the eyes and name the ego. You do that, you're on your way. Do you agree? Is there a step you do before that? What do you think? No, I, I think that that is definitely it. I think even to get to that point, uh, it, it's going to be awareness. And I think this falls in the same thing. I think you have to have awareness that either something needs to change or, you know, uh, what you're doing isn't working. And then the best way to start is to find out who you are. You know, I think yes. that's the best way. So in Stress Mastery, starting next week, we're going to be on 10 weeks. We'll, we'll announce it on Friday. But the next, uh, until the end of the year, we're going to be talking about the 10 archetypes of purpose. And we're going to we're gonna dedicate each week to each one of the purposes. How can a person go easily and find out their purpose so they can follow along with us these last few months? Uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're not a member, um, go to stressmastercommunity.com. You sign up for free, uh, name and email. And then once you get in, you go into what we have is the alpha class. And I believe in the third lesson there, we have uh, purpose. You go, you take your purpose exercise, and then there's one right after it that helps you find your values. And so when you're doing the, the, the purpose exercise, it's a rapid fire exercise. You just follow the instructions on the video. And if you have issues, you can just connect with one of the coaches or me or, or David. Yeah. So when you're in a community, when they come into that community, you have to, I have to ask, right, is because that's the free part of the community. They haven't joined the community, but they have all this free stuff, right? Can they still DM, DM us or do they have to be yeah. a member to DM? No. Yep. You got access to pretty much the, the homepage where you communicate to all the coaches and all of the members that are in there. And if you have something that's a little bit more personal, more private, you need something direct, you can um, find one of the coaches that are on there, uh, click them, and then I'll say yep. private message. You send them a private message. Okay. Just like just like you do on Facebook, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would recommend if you're listening to this and you listen to the podcast, go do the purpose exercise. It'll take you 30 minutes, maybe an hour. I don't know. But it's an exercise. It's done with videos. It's an exercise that we do with our clients. And if you have issues with it, just let us know. We'll help you through it. You might even be able to ask one of the coaches in a community to take you through it. Because mm-hmm. I know Coach Peggy will do that. I know Coach Pablo, Coach Felix, Coach Sandra. They will take you through it if you ask them. You don't want to do the online, right? Did I just put everybody out there, David? A little bit. You got you got to look at your face like, what the hell, Bill? What are you saying? <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's great, especially or even when you're going through it, you may catch a, a hiccup where you're not sure if you're even doing it right because second-guessing yourself during the, that uh, exercise. You don't want to second-guess yourself, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reach out to one of the coaches. Say, I'm doing it this way. You know, I don't think I'm doing it right. They may yeah. be able to help, you know, quickly like that. Or yeah. like I said, they, they most of the time they'll be willing to offer it. You know, yes, because we because it's important. So if you want self-respect, you got to know who you are. What's the self you're going to respect, mm-hmm. right? You can't respect the ego because the ego doesn't care about you, just so you know. All right? Yeah. The ego cares about conflict mm-hmm. and living in conflict. And being in a red zone, understand that. You must understand that. So when you split those eyes, the eye of identification is the head of the ego. Name the ego. And the eye of presence, you will get your, you will know who you are. That's your purpose. That's who you are. Now, the second thing I would say, if you're looking to write your, your build your own reality of self-respect, your self-authoring your script, I think it's important to take a relationship inventory. And we're talking about self-respect, Right. Is your tribe you surround yourself with building you up or do they tear you down? Mm -hmm. It's important. And and, and this is just for you. You don't have to say, don't have to call anybody out. Remember, we're not judgment. Or, you know, does your significant others, and I say significant others because it could be, it's not always just wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, right? It's a close family. Do they support your dreams? Do they support your opinions, your lifestyle, your preferences? Or they don't. You have to start looking at the people that will respect you because you can't have self-respect and try to please people that don't respect you because what will happen, the ego will put you in disrespect and that pulls you again off the mountain into the valley. And does your, you know, significant, when we talk about significant others, are you being treated by others as you wish to be treated? Or people treating you, are they treating you badly? Are they disrespecting you? Are they doing this? 
you need to, I, I, this is what I would do, right? Again, I'm going to ask Dave, well, you agree with me? I take a, a relationship inventory because the relationship category is the category where self-worth is, right? Because it's always relationships with ourselves. And if we don't have a good relationship with others and we allow that, then we have low self-worth. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I, I think so. And the one thing I add to that is kind of separate yourself from everybody just for a little bit. You know, uh, I, I took a, a very long time uh, doing this during, you know, the beginning of my journey. And I think it was one of the best things that I did. You know, I pulled away from social media and all the external um, factors, because when we're talking about this, we're talking about like impactful relationships around you. You know, yes. social media, they, they got thousands of followers that their opinions hit just as hard, whether you think it or not. And that's thousands of people you got to deal with. Now, yes. you, you know, deal with just very your good. close group at this point. So I, I dealt with, with Bill and Vanessa, yep. my mom, my dad, my brother, and things like that. I, I bit off a smaller chunk to really decide who I am. Because when I finally came back on social media, none of the crap that was online affected me. But yeah. if I would have did it in the beginning, all of those opinions are opinions to your ego, whether or not you think you can handle them or not. They're all just being fed. And when it comes to thousands versus like your center six or five or whatever, those opinions in numbers are just going to outweigh those. So I think pulling yourself away is a great, great thing. Awesome advice. In fact, that's what I'm doing currently right now as I'm getting ready to launch out the new books, launch everything out, right? I'm not on social media at all. Literally took myself off all social media. The only thing you see is the podcast posted on Twitter. I have not, I haven't posted in months. Because I needed to take a break while I reset the next stage of my career, my life. Because I respect myself, and I and I don't want anybody's opinion of what I'm doing. <laughs> the opinions that I trust are the ones that are with me. Mm-hmm. But I never even thought of that, David. That's that's exactly what I did. I didn't realize I did that. <laughs> but that's powerful. That's a powerful aspect, and that's a great idea. And then finally, I have you got to set your self care routine. In other words, you got to set the day. You got to close the day. You got to have your diet, your exercise, and you got to be able to control your state, your routine in dealing with conflict, letting go, resolutions and response. You got to set that. That's how I'm going to live my life. I That is setting your routine in high self-respect and high self-worth. Mm-hmm. And then you execute it. Do you agree with that? Yeah, what I what I did, and I actually I'll post it in the the community because it's cool coming around to this. When I when I decided to start this journey, I I I wrote at the top the Unbreakable Man, and I wrote the routine and the habits of that person that I wanted to be. And no matter what or who came into it, he wasn't breaking those habits or those routines. And I realized that that was that was setting that person's respect. And I self that person yeah. allowed me to really see, okay, you want to be that person? How does that person act? What time does that person go to sleep? Who do they hang out with? Who will they not hang out with? You know, what will they entertain as far as fun and stuff? Like I listed it out in such a big way that now it's funny because I was looking back. I was like, I knew every single one of those things. And I realized like when friends ask me, do you want to go out and eat here? And I know it's not a, a cheap day or anything like that. No. And in that paper, that person said that. And I, I, I thought wow, I was setting up good. just routines and habits, but I was setting up my boundaries of respect for myself that nobody else can break. The new identity. Yeah. You literally scripted new identity. Can you put that in a community? I think that's freaking yeah, brilliant no. because that is, that's it. So, we, we, you know, well, understanding that self-esteem is about how much you love yourself as you interact with the world. Self-worth is about how much you love yourself within feeling worthy, love, joy, and peace. And self-respect is how you show love toward yourself. What David just said, that's showing love toward yourself. And a lot of people will say, well, that's being selfish. No, it's not. It's setting your identity to become a, a higher version of reality that you live in now. You're creating your reality. And when we set that identity, when David set that identity, he says, that's the person, this is the identity that I'm going to build my life in the world with. But he also knows that's not him. 
But that identity is connected to who he is. Now he has head, heart, and hand connection. And now that reality that he set isn't going back to the valley because it's become his life. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to think about it anymore. This is who I am. And that identity will continue to grow. But as he changes his identity and expands his reality, it's always connected to who he is. That's where self-love comes in because he knows who truly David is. Does that make sense to you? I don't want to speak for you, but does that make sense? No, no, for sure. And, and like you said, it, it was it was an interesting thing to write. And it was, always, it was a very honest thing to sit with and do because it wasn't something I did. It wasn't something I wasn't currently doing. So it almost like, you know, it was a it was awakening to see that okay if you want to achieve this then you got to stop doing what you're doing now and not be so breakable that was my problem family event I'm on a diet but it's my family yeah I've known yeah. this guy for 20 years he asked me to go out of course I'm going to go out no it's my girlfriend it's this it, I was breakable and that person didn't have respect and didn't have boundaries and being able to set that identity with the respect I know I need going into it before I even turned into that person, I think allowed me to have an understanding before I even got there of what I needed to do in order to create and achieve what I wanted to do. Damn, David. I love that technique. That's a great technique. It's strong. It's powerful. It's clear. A lot of clarity. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, I just randomly look back. At, I like looking back at the old journals and stuff. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? It's crazy. I do every single one of these things. And with this week being on her spouse, like if it's right in. Excellent. So listen, everybody, get in there, get your purpose, get involved. As we launch out the new community, launch out the new courses, the, the new programs, the new books, you're going to love it. We, You guys will have a head start because I could tell you right now, we are on a mission to shift the planet, and our mission here is to create a shift in a planet, and you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe, and those links are right below the show notes. You can also go into the community. The link is on the show notes also. So just click, go in. It's free. Don't need a credit card. Don't need anything. No gimmick. Go get it. I'm not selling you a damn thing. Go get it. As always, until next time, stay inspired.